Oh, give the Lord a praise. How many enjoy Pastor Wayne? Man of God, man of God. Love him, love him to life. How many love him to life? Hallelujah. You open your Bibles with me to the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How good he is. Tonight, I want you to get rid of every limitation that you've placed on Christ. everything. Sometimes we limit God by our own culture, our own thought patterns. Mm. An outward attack is evidence of an, an invisible war that's going on. God has put a word in your mouth. Hosea, the 14th chapter, second verse says, take with you the words and turn to the Lord. We are a snare with the words of our own mouth. Proverbs 6, 2. A snare. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I don't like negative stuff. I want to speak the word. Acts 10.38, Amplified Bible, how God anointed, consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. He went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil. For God was with him. God was with him. Hmm. How many know God is with you? Right now, God is with you. Go to Isaiah 35 with me quickly. How many know that sometimes when you read the words, you get a hero in the Bible? You pick up a hero. I, I always like an underdog as a hero. Someone that's not coming from a position of knowing. Someone that's coming from a place of not understanding but yet believing. Come on. Walking in blind faith and saying, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Isaiah 35, look at verse 4. It says, say to those who are of a fearful and hasty heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. And with the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Verse 5. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a hawk. And the tongue of the dumb shall sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And the burning sand, verse 7. And the mirage shall become a pool. And the thirsty ground springs of water. And in the haunt of jackals, where they lay resting, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you as I bring this word, Lord, that you showed me this hero. Came from the position of not knowing, but believing by faith because his mind was stayed on you. That you keep in perfect peace. Lord, I thank you tonight, Lord, for who's ever here. As the word goes deep into their spirits, Father. Any sickness we rebuke in the name of Jesus. Any infirmity we take authority over in the word of Jesus. We claim the blood of the lamb and we speak the word that by your stripes we were healed. 
I send the Holy Ghost into the homes of those that are sick, including my own home. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch my wife. Touch those that are sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, and I believe right now from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, they're going to be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father. I give you praise, honor, and glory. Mm, my hero. A Roman centurion, my hero. Go to Matthew 8 with me. Mm. Look at the fifth verse. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Now, I want you to stop for a moment. A centurion is a man that was over a hundred other soldiers. He had authority over them. He was a Roman. Romans do not believe in Christ. They didn't believe in Christ. But something had to transpire in this man's life that he heard about Jesus. He heard that Jesus was in town. And he had a great love for his servant because actually he was in rebellion going to Jesus because the Romans were against that. They didn't want him to do that. But his love for his servant overcame very fears. And because he loved so deeply, he believed deeply. When you love like that, you could believe that God could heal and set people free. How many could say amen to that? When you love like that, anything, what's impossible for man is possible with our God. Somebody shout and say amen to that. Verse 6 is in saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home. He's sick. Why would he go to a man who's a perfect stranger to him? He must have heard that this man called Jesus was a healer. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He opened prison door. How many know God could open your prison door right now? Every scar in your life, he could heal right now. Every situation in your life, he can heal right now. He is able to do abundantly above what you could ask or think right now in this building in the name of Jesus. I want your faith to rise tonight in this building. I want you to look at that which is not as though it should be. I want you to look at something by faith and say, I see the finished product. I want you to walk down the corridor of unbelief and say, I walk by faith and not by sight in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of the living God. And because I'm a child, oh, somebody shout yes and give him praise. That's what God wants in this people. I want you to get excited. Excited for what the Lord wants to do in your life. How many want to be excited for what God wants to do in your life? See, immediately, listen, immediately, Jesus said to, unto him, immediately, I will come and heal him. I'll go right to your house and heal this guy. Look, listen to faith. He's my, this guy has got to be my hero. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only. I got so much belief in you that you don't have to travel all the way to my home. I got so much faith and I heard what you've done that I believe right now just the mere passing of a word from between your holy lips. Shaka basata. Just the word passing be 
between your holy lips, my servant would be healed. He didn't even be healed, shall be healed. Now, this next verse provokes something in my study. What would get this man to say this to Jesus? Listen to what he says in verse 9. For I am a man under authority. So he knew what obedience could bring to an individual. Submission and obedience to an individual. He knew what it meant. He submitted every day. And he's seen the blessing of being a submitted individual. You got rebellion in your life, get it out. You're never going to prosper. Come on. Never going to prosper. Got rebellion, any kind of rebellion, any, un any unforgiveness, that's rebellion. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Come on. If you got it in your life, it's not going to get you any blessings in your life. This centurion knew the secret of that. He may have not have been a believer then who came to Jesus, but after he left, he was. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he do it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. He marveled. And said to them that followed, Truly or verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't open a prison door. He didn't, he didn't walk around claiming a new car, a new chariot. Nothing. All he said was, I believe. Somebody help me here. He said, I believe, Jesus. I believe that if you just speak the word, come on. When I speak in authority to something, well, you have that authority, Jesus. I see it. I know it. I feel it. And if you just speak it, my servant's going to get healed. See, this was a double dose. It wasn't only coming from Jesus. It was coming from the centurion. This guy could not last without getting healed. He had to get healed. He had the centurion believing, and he had Jesus standing there speaking the word. And I speak the word over you tonight. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak the word over your family. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak the word over your job. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. receiving this tonight. Word, word. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that follow, truly I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel, even through the believers. They haven't got a grasp on it like this guy's got a grasp on it. How many want that in your life? Come on. How many want to have a grasp that you could say, listen to me, all you got to do is ask and you shall receive. There are some things that you have to outlive with your prayer. They're not going to go away with one prayer. They're not going to go away because you attend church one or two weeks out of the month. They're not going to go away because you wake up one or two mornings and you have fellowship with God and you read two verses in your Bible. They're going to come and go because you're a child of the living God. And because you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit guides you and directs you to the feet of the Master every day of your life, somebody shout yes and give him praise. I grew up in an atmosphere where I had to be obedient. Respect and obedience was the very essence of my behavior and my, my life. Schooled in the streets of New York, schooled by the underworld, uncles, cousins, father, everybody involved. I, I, I had to be obedient. 
And I found out that obedient brought me money, brought me respect. And the respect I got, I respected back. And then God saved me. Amen. Took me out of the street. Washed up my act. Even though they thought I lost my mind, thank God, thank God he saved me. Thank God, thank God he saved me. Thank somebody shout, yes, thank God he saved me. Took me up out of the miry clay. See my best friend die in my arms. Another guy that I grew up with. Died, murdered in the street. Went to the funeral. 20 years old, dead. My own cousin, dead. My uncle, dead, murdered. One by one. I could have been there. But God spared me. For such as a time as this. Somebody say amen and give him praise. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 11. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said, why would he say that? Of course, there was unbelief in the church. Come on. You could sit in a service and be an unbeliever. Come on. You could come to church every week and not really understand who Jesus is in your life. You just come because it's the right thing to do, you think. But I'm telling you about a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, he's real. Come on. Before I could step on the pulpit, I had to find out he was real. Come on. I had to find out he heals. He sets people free. He breaks chains in people's lives. Come on. He heals addictions. That's who he is. His name is Jesus. Somebody praise him and give him glory and honor. That's who he is. Get a relationship with him. Draw close to him. I love when I see young people that are on fire for God, but don't let the fire turn into aspiration. You don't want to get to a place where you're not schooled to be. Because you not only hurt yourself, you hurt all those around you. You want to be prepared. God has to take you to the school of hard knocks. Come on. You think you're being beat up, but God is molding you. God is, come on, shaping you to be the man and woman of God that he wants you to be. So when the battles come, you know in whom you believe. Somebody give the Lord a praise. How many receiving this tonight in the name of Jesus? Woo! Listen, Jesus said in verse 13, unto the centurion, go thy way. I could imagine him getting all shook up. What do you mean? Go thy way. I know I told you to just speak the word, but it's that easy? Thou hast believed. Look at your name and say, you got to believe. So be it done unto thee. Of course, you believe. So be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. You don't have to be in the room laying hands. You don't have to be in the room pouring a gallon of oil on somebody. You don't have to be there. You don't have to spit on people when you pray. All you got to do is believe, and people can get healed even though they're miles away. Somebody shout yes and give him praise. I want you to see Jesus in his greatness. The Roman soldiers seen it. Go to John, the sixth chapter with me quickly. Thank you, Lord. How many receiving this with me tonight? I'm preaching to myself. Mm. One word from Christ and all sickness must flee. One word from his word and you're healed by the power of God. See Christ as he is today. The almighty God, the omnipotent Father, in the name of Jesus that can heal you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Don't limit God in your life. 
battles of your mind can be overcome. Strongholds can be broken. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, profit nothing. You've been feeding your flesh for years and it didn't do nothing for you. But got you fat and drunk and stoned. Come on. Think about that. You feed in your flesh and it did nothing for you. You may have felt good in the beginning, but after a while, it tore you up. Come on. How many could say amen to that? It tore you up. Come on. Destroyed your stomach, destroyed your teeth, made you go blind, gave you diabetes, high blood pressure, all that because the flesh profited nothing. Somebody help me here. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I want you to receive them into your spirit tonight. In the name of Jesus. How many receiving it tonight? Hallelujah. I'm going to close in a few minutes, but I want to read you something about the Apostle Paul. Listen to the prayer he prayed. If you're wise, you'll pray this. Go to Ephesians, the first chapter. Come on. Mm. Thank you, Lord. This is the NIV I'm reading out of. Look at the 17th verse. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the word go deep into your spirit. The glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Who said you not, you don't get an inheritance? Hallelujah. Come on, it may not be money, but it's something better than that. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Listen to what he says, listen. And is incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above. Touch your neighbor and say, far above. All rule and authority, power and dominion, every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Amen. Amen. He wants you to know him in his greatness, his unlimited power. I'm going to close with this scripture, Colossians, second chapter, please. We still have communion tonight. The meal that heals. The meal that heals. Colossians, look at the ninth verse. For in him, let your neighbor say in him, for in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. And in him you have been made complete. Touch your neighbor. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. How many people are complete in this place? Come on. You're complete. You feel you're complete. Listen to me carefully. It's easy to fall out of completeness. Because the flesh is always warring against the spirit. When you're complete in God, stay in that realm. Okay? You have to walk in the world, but be not of the world. When we walk with Christ, we have one hand in heaven and our feet on the ground. We have to live in this world, but that doesn't mean we have to submit to the dictates of this world. Could somebody say amen to that? 
Somebody said, well, that's supernatural stuff. No, it's everyday living because I've seen it. I'm saved 45 years, and I've seen people come and go. They're super spiritual. They're this, they're that. So they're so super spiritual that they walked away right out of Christ. Get a balance. It's the key to life. A false balance is an abomination to God. But a just weight is his delight, says in Proverbs. Hallelujah. And in him you have been made complete. He is the head over all rule and authority. And in him, verse 11, you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands in the removal of the body of flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When you accept him into your life, the covenant that he makes with you is he circumcises your heart. That's a covenant. A lot of people don't understand what covenant's all about. Marriage is a covenant. Your relationship with Christ is a covenant. One day I'll teach a whole series on the covenant. I've done it before. Covenant relationships are very, very important in your life. Churches grow in covenant relationships because they become stable in the things of God. How many received this today? Would you stand on your feet with me, please? In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He healed you. You're healed. You're healed. Why don't you close your eyes and lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands right now. As we worship the Lord, I want you to pull down what's rightfully yours. Family, friends, children, job opportunities. God's going to do some changes in 2019. Some of your lives are not going to be the same at the end of this year. You're going to be a different person. As long as you keep him in the middle of your equation, keep him in the middle of everything that you do, Jesus will always bless you. Serving him so many years, I've seen him bless me over and over. Let's lift your hands and let's worship him together in the name of Jesus.
you close your eyes and lift your hands. And one word that I spoke tonight pierced those layers in your life that have kept you from the fullness of God. You need to build on that. You need to seize the moment. God brings opportunities in our life. My son preached this morning on favor. I felt the favor of God. I felt how God favored me in the kingdom. I felt how he favored me in my life. How that night when they fired all those bullets at me and not one hit me. How that night in that club where a guy stuck the gun in my ribs and pulled the trigger and the gun jammed. Favor. For such is the time as this. God can do that in your life. As we begin to worship him again, if you need prayer tonight, I want you to get out of your seat, out to the closest aisle, and come up here so we can pray for you. And believe God for a breakthrough in your life. If you need a breakthrough, come. Come as we worship the Lord in the name of Jesus. Come on, come.
Now, if you need prayer, if it's a broken heart, put your hand on your heart. If it's tormenting things in your mind, touch your head. If it's sickness in your stomach, put your hand on your son, tummy. Touch the area. If there be confusion, touch your mind, touch your head. In the name of Jesus. By your stripes. Father, by your stripes on your son. Those stripes, a tender shoot, commonly no one even recognized it. Grown up before people that didn't even understand him, that by those stripes, we were healed. We are healed. In the name of Jesus, I claim the blood of the Lamb prosperity, healing, deliverance. You said in your word, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you, not as the world can give, but only as I can give. I pray the peace of Jesus Christ into your homes, into your lives, into your relationships, in the name of Jesus. I call out every demonic attack upon your life, upon your family, upon your loved ones, upon your finances.